Hi Sugar Snaps! Today I want to share with you some sunflower dye I did and show you how to do it yourself. So this skein of yarn is wool that I mordanted with alum and cream of tartar. I did a 10% alum and 7% cream of tartar mix and I added my little info card here so that I would know the process that I used. So this is just my little sample. I got this kind of coffee brownish color. Um, I was pretty happy with it for an experiment. It turned out really well. So I wanted to share with you the process that I went through. So the sunflower seeds that I am using came from the autumn beauty type of sunflower. And I'll show that picture here. Um, I have a bunch of different heads here that I cut off. Okay, so I have a bunch of heads and some of them have been pecked at by the birds, uh, but I still have quite a few seeds in here. So I'm going to process these for my dye bath. So to start that process, you need to scrape off any of the fuzzies on the top of the sunflower head. So I have just the sunflower head. This looks dried out and old because the flower had wilted and it's just the head dried on the stalk that I cut off. Um, so there's a layer of kind of fuzzy um, bits on top of the layer of seeds. So I'm going to go in with my hands and rub that away. And this is kind of messy, so it's a good idea to do it outside um, or just wipe off your counter space when you're done. So I'm rubbing off all that top texture. And now you can see I have a nice layer of seeds in there. And I'm just going to brush my thumb across the surface pretty roughly. And you'll start to see the seeds begin to fling out. And so now I have a nice collection of black seeds. And you'll notice as you're extracting these seeds from the seed heads that they'll turn your fingers kind of brownish. So my, my fingers are starting to get a brown tint. For sunflower seed dyeing, you'll need a small pot set aside only for dyeing. Don't cook in this pot. You want a pot that you can use just for natural dyeing. You'll want a skein of pre-treated wool yarn, so uh, mordanted with alum and cream of tartar. And to do your own mordanting, check out this video on how to alum mordant wool fiber. You'll need a several heads from your sunflowers that still have seeds in them. And you'll be able to tell that by pulling away the top layer of the um, stamens from the top of the flower. And then there will be little black seeds embedded into the top of the sunflower head. And you'll be able to, be able to pull those out and see those easily. And a scale to weigh out your fiber and weigh out your material. This is not an exact science. I'm just gonna throw in some of the seeds that I have. You can take note of the weight of your fiber compared to the amount of weight of sunflower seeds you add to your dye bath if you wanna keep a recipe for future dye projects. Okay, so to extract the sunflower seeds from the seed heads, I'm going to take my pot and do this directly into the pot. And I've scraped away the top surface of this sunflower, so all the stamens are gone and it's just the seeds, layer of seeds. I'm going to end up with some vegetable matter in with the seeds, and that means that part of the sunflower head will end up in my pot, and that's okay. I'm just gonna roughly pop these out with my thumb and allow them to fall into the pot. And all, my fingers will start to turn a little brown. Um, if you want to be quick about it, you can even go in and start to scrape off. Just pull off that top layer where the seeds are from the base of the sunflower and you'll end up with chunks like this that you can just throw in your pot as well. You're going to be straining the liquid dye from this dye matter, so you won't um, need to worry about it getting stuck in the wall when you're dyeing it. 
you'll already have removed it from the dye bath. And this is kind of a messy process, so work outside or just be ready to clean up your space. Do a little sweeping and wipe down your countertops. They like to fling everywhere. Okay, and do that. Pull off the top layer of the flower. Just removing that. And then add the seeds to your pot. And I would suggest if you're doing one skein of yarn, so about five to six ounces of yarn, you'll probably want five to six um, sunflower heads, depending on the size. I have, this is a pretty small head. I would go probably with eight of this size. But if you're, if you have a medium or large head sunflower, some, some sunflower heads get pretty large so that they're like dessert plate size. Um, shoot for between five to eight sunflower heads worth of sunflower seeds. And I'll tell you what that is in measurement in just a second when I get all of these extracted. If this process bothers your hands, if your skin is really dry or um, your fingers, the, this material is too rough for your fingers, go ahead and put on rubber gloves to do this process. It'll protect your, it'll protect your skin from the surface of the sunflowers. Also from your fingers getting stained. And the drier the sunflower head, the easier it will be to remove the sunflower seeds. But the dye potential is actually better with the fresher sunflower seeds because the pigment is still fresh. The more dry the sunflower seeds, there's slightly less pigment potential in the sunflower seed. And I am making a mess here. That's okay, I'll just wipe it down. Okay, so this is head number five for me. I'm getting a good surface of sunflower seeds down there. And I actually, when I did this batch of, um, for a sample, what I did was I did one extraction where I let the pot simmer on the stove for two hours with the sunflower seeds. And then I extracted that dye and saved it in mason jars. And then I did a second extraction with the same batch of sunflower seeds, a little bit less water. And I let that sit for another two hours on the stove, just on low, um, just kept it warm. But more pigment came from the sunflower seeds at that point. And then, and then once I did that second extraction, then I combined both in my pot and dyed the fiber in both extractions. So I had a double extraction pot um, to work with. Okay, so that is seven sunflower heads and they range from really small like this guy to more medium size like this guy. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a quick um, measurement on how much sunflower seeds I have. So I'm setting my scale and tearing it with my bowl on here. Tearing it so that I can go to zero, it doesn't calculate the bowl weight. Pour my sunflower seeds in and I have 1.7 ounces of sunflower seeds here. So I'll pour that back into my pot, set aside my scale, and I wanna fill the pot so that it's half full of warm water. And set this on the stove on medium low for about two hours. If it comes to a simmer in that two hours, lower it a little bit more and just hold it at 180 degrees or at a really low simmer 
uh, for two hours. The sunflower seed dye bath is ready to be strained, so I have my bowl, strainer, um, my mesh, mesh sieve, and the pot of sunflower seed dye. And I'm go this is really hot liquid, so be careful when you're transferring it over. I'm gonna pour it through the sieve and catch all of the debris. And I have a really nice dark dye bath here. And I'm going to do a second second process with these uh, sunflower seeds. Set aside your bowl of dye that you just strained out. Fill your pot up halfway with water and you're going to do the same process again, allowing it to simmer on the stove for two hours to extract any more dye that is possible from the uh, sunflower seeds. And then we'll get to dyeing the wool fiber. Okay, we've done the second batch of sunflower seed dye in the dye pot and transfer that to our bowl. And now I'm going to pour the dye liquid back into the pot. I mixed the two batches of the sunflower seed dye and did a pot's worth of dye here so that I can dye this fiber. I have a batch of alum and cream of tartar mordanted wool yarn and I'm going to take this and place it into my dye pot and as you can see when I pull it up it has a nice brownish pink tint to it right now so I'll put this in my pot and then put your pot on the stove and simmer on the stove for about an hour. Okay, the sunflower seed dye bath is done and I'm so excited to show you this yarn because it did something that I wasn't expecting, which brings up a really cool conversation in natural dyeing. But first, this turned out to a deep brown, almost gray black fiber or yarn. And I'll show you the first batch that I showed you earlier in the video. This is very brown. And this came out a lot darker and a lot more um, deep espresso brown or almost black gray. Um, so, which brings up the point that natural dyeing is not an exact science because you're working with plants. You're working with uh, cochineal, which is a bug, or um, sunflower seeds, which are different depending on the plant and the type of variety you're working with or black eyed Susan, which depends on how early you pick the flowers or what kind of um, soil they're planted in. So there are so many variables in natural dyeing that it's really hard to get the same uh, outcome every single time, especially with things like, like sunflower seeds and and flowers and um, bark and things that vary depending on how the year is reacting, the weather, um, the soil that the thing is planted in, the region the thing is planted in. So I just, I love this example of how I was expecting kind of a tan caramely or um, camely brown and ended up with a, a deep rich espresso -y color because natural dyeing it's always different and that's the the joy of it that's the exciting part of natural dyeing if you're a control freak natural dyeing will be hard because you can't control the outcome and if you're trying to get a specific color do a lot of testing be, and and be ready to throw in a lot of material into a dye bath when you get it right because um it, that, it might only happen that once. And I think everybody should try natural dyeing at least once and maybe a couple different times using different materials because it's a really cool experiment in how um, plants react and how you can use natural organic materials to create beautiful colors um, organically because uh, things in, in nature are never the same. Humans are never the same. And it is true with the colors that you can create with natural dyes. They're never the same. Um, 
it's it's very hard even though I, I talk about writing your little info card putting all the information about the die on your little info card so that you can replicate it later it doesn't mean you're going to get the exact replication again you can you can try to um, harvest things at the same time of year, use the same mordants, use the same type of fiber, uh, use the same dyeing process, heat extraction or solar dyeing or whatever type of dyeing you wanna do, cold dyeing. Um, but it will always come out a little bit different. And that's, that's the exciting part about it, I think. And I hope you come along for the journey and experience that as well, because it's, um, it's just, it's taking part in what nature is already doing naturally. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Subscribe below to get notified when I put out a new video in basket weaving, natural dyeing, spinning, and other fiber arts. Check out textileindeed.com where I share posts and resources on fiber arts. Thanks for watching.